Welcome to a video on vibrations. As you can see from the sketch, we're going to consider a pulley uh, spring and a mass system as depicted. Uh, and we are going to consider the pulley as being massless here, as well as frictionless. And the cord, which is shown here as being inextensible, we would like to find the natural frequencies omega and f, as well as the corresponding period tau. And to kick a problem off like this, it would be really, really helpful if you can establish um, how the moving elements are moving with respect to one another. In this case, we have uh, a pulley and a mass that are both uh, moving. So what is that relationship? And to answer that question, as I had shown in a couple previous videos, uh, you would like to employ this idea of the conservation of rope. And to do that, you need to establish a datum and then shoot off coordinates to those moving elements. In this case, I've shot off off of the ground. I've just selected the ground as a datum. Uh, the Y sub pulley or Y sub P as well as the Y sub M for the Y of the mass. And when you do that, you need to next account for the length of rope. So on the left, you have a total of YP, which is this term right here. And then on the right, you have the difference in the two, yp minus ym, and all of that adds up to a constant. So when you do the algebra, you get 2yp minus ym is a constant, and incrementally you get this result, which leads you to this result. That is to say, the pulley is moving at half of the, that of the mass. Now, you may wonder where, where I got a zero when in the incremental form, whereas it was a constant previously. And to that end, I'm going to urge you if you're needing a little refresher, to go back to this video that I produced, particularly at about the four minute mark. And over there we prove why when you bring it into its incremental form, the thing becomes uh, zero. Okay, so now that we've established that the pulley is moving at half that of the mass, we want to next go ahead and draw our free body diagrams. On the left uh, pictures, I have the statical ones. On the right ones uh, involving some acceleration, I have the dynamical ones. Let's begin on the left. So I've gone ahead and isolated the pulley as well as the mass, and I'm using a double subscript notation. So the FSS in this picture um, literally stands for the statical spring force. The T sub SC literally stands for the tension uh, statically for the cord and so on and so forth. And then when you apply your statics, I'm calling down to be positive, that's arbitrary. You find that the spring force statically is double that of the uh, tension of the cord statically. And then you also, when you do the same thing for the mass, you see that the weight is directly equal to the tension, as you can see. And then when you apply Hooke's law, which basically says that the spring force is proportional to the stretch, uh, assuming that the uh, spring at this state, uh, at the opening state, has a stretch amount of S, then uh, obviously the spring force there is going to be K times S. And so when you uh, multiply this equation 3 by 2 and then sub it into this equation 2, and then you equate that to this last equation from Hooke's law, you'll find that uh, the weight is one half of the uh, k times s. So that is my equation five. Now, if you move over to the pictures on the right-hand side where we're looking at everything dynamically, I'm now dispensing with the double subscripts and I'm relabeling things. So now I have a spring force uh, under the dynamical setting as well as the ten tension in the cord there. So, um, uh, and then you'll notice off on the side, I'm showing the acceleration in green, which is your X double dot. And remember that the pulley we mentioned at the outset is massless. And so when you apply Newton's second law of motion in its linear formulation, calling again downward positive, uh, on the right-hand side where you have those inertial terms, the M, in this case, the M of the P, P or the mass of the pulley, let's say, is zero. Okay, so you're down to a statics problem, and you see um, that uh, double the tension is equal to the force of the spring. And then once again, by Hooke's law, what is the force of the spring? It, again, it's, it's going to be k times the amount it's 
it's stretched. But now, if we have said that uh, the mass has gone down by an X amount, uh, given our relationship between the pulley and the mass, remember that the pulley is going half that of the mass. So if the mass went down by X, the pulley went down by half as much. So that's one half of X added to the S that it started with. So we're down at a grand total of um, uh, S plus one half of X, and all of that is multiplied by K to give us back our spring force. And so when I do Newton's second law of motion, on the mass, now the mass obviously is not massless, it has a mass amount which we're calling m, and so uh, on the left hand side where we're accounting for the forces, you have a mg in the assumed positive downward direction, less the t force, and all of that is equal to the inertial term m times the acceleration or x double dot here. And so now you just need to follow the equations, what I'm showing here. So I'm equating equation 6, which is this one, to equation 7 right beneath it. And when you do that, you get uh, double the tension is equal to this term. And so if you solve for the tension, you get T is equal to 1 half of KS plus a quarter KX. That's what I'm calling equation 9. Then when you bring the statical result, equation 5, and sub it into equation 9 for uh, the 1 half of KS term, you, you can find the relationship T is equal to the weight plus a quarter KX. And so we're just going to keep on following the mapping here. We ha are now putting this last equation, number 10, back into equation 8. And when you do that, you get this result right here. And notice when you look at the algebra that the, the weight terms are going to cancel out. And that is a, a, a direct result of, um, of our actually taking our measurements from the said statical equilibrium position, the SEP position. So that will be true in these linear uh, types of vibratory problems where you're measuring from the SEP. Okay. I just wanted to show that just in case you, you ever wondered why sometimes in these linear type of vibratory problems, why weight may not be accounted for. Well, there there's the reason right there. It, it washes out. And so what you're left with um, in equation 11, which I'm showing off to the side here, is this. You get your uh, equation of motion in its non-standard form. And then to get it in its standard form, you need to divide through by the mass, that leading mass term. And when you do, the term that's sitting in front of the x here happens to be the square of the omega. Okay, so this is literally omega squared, as I'm trying to show here. And so to solve for your omega, you need to take the square root of both sides, which gives you an omega of this amount. And knowing that omega is 2 pi times the little f, you can solve for the linear frequency by dividing by 2 pi on your omega. And doing so gives you 1 quarter divided by pi into root k over m. And then since your period is the inverse of that linear frequency, you flip that and you find that the period or tau is 4 pi times root m over k. Um, one thing I'll mention before we end this video is that um, sometimes people will think that uh, the tension in the cord for the statical case, which is this one, the TSC, which you'll notice is exactly equal to the weight of that uh, object, that mass, all right? That's the mg. Sometimes people will make the mistake of thinking that that is uh, going to be maintained in a dynamical setting. Well, the case is not so. Uh, as you can see by equation 10, the tension in the cord is not just the weight, but it's actually a little bit more than the weight when it's accelerating downward, as I'm showing here. It's the weight plus uh, a quarter of that uh, kx term, uh, as this tension in the cord is um, going to try to uh, uh, re bring some restoration into the system. So I just wanted to point that out, that uh, when you have things working in statics and then they change into dynamics, things can be uh, different. Hope, hope that was helpful, and uh, we'll see you in a future video. Thank you.